Coming up on this episode of the Weekend Warm-Up, Emil Rees joins us in the studio to celebrate putting pen to paper on a brand new contract, and the head of the Greza Derby, we speak to the man himself, Graham Alexander. All that and so much more on the Preston North End Weekend Warm-Up. Hello and welcome then to this new episode of the Weekend Warm-Up, and we've got brilliant news because this is Emil Reese. You recognise him from Preston North End, scoring goals left, right, and centre. New contract to you. So hi, Ed Otoluga. Yeah. That means hello <laughs> and congratulations. Which you knew that because you could speak Danish just like me. Um, so this new contract takes you up to 2025. It's brilliant news for us. How does it feel for you? First of all, thank you. Um, yeah, it's amazing to to be here. Uh, yeah, next year. Um, it's an amazing club, so uh, I'm happy to, to sign another year. What was the major factor in you wanting to extend that contract? Um, obviously, all the people around this club, uh, the players, uh, the staff, they, they're amazing. So, yeah, um, and hopefully we can yeah, get higher up in the table and we can, like, I think, I reckon we got a good team. We, we just need to get the results in. So, yeah, that's definitely one of the factors as well. Okay, so if the results recently maybe haven't been what you wanted, the performance certainly it was. So should we just remind people how well you did actually play when you kept one of the best teams in Europe quiet for the best part of an hour? Yeah, I think um, it was it was a good uh, yeah good game. Uh, we were really close. We could have been in front maybe. Um, we definitely had some big chances to it. And yeah, what uh, what uh, who knows what will happen if we, we scored them goals? So yeah, um, definitely a lot of positive from that game. As opposed to the game before, which we probably won't talk about. No, no, no we won't talk about it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just remind you about that Carabao Cup game at Deepdale during the week. Curtis Jones loses out here, and now it's Maguire. This is the chance for Barkhazen to run, and he's got hit with Matip here, wrong-footed as Barkhazen gets the shot away. Except Vandenberg wins it and Potts finds Maguire now. And Potts will continue his run forward. He's through now. And come Preston take the lead through Potts. It's a good save by Adrian. And will be a corner. Barkhazen's won it back though. And here's McCann now. Could open up again. Maguire waits in the middle. And it is through to Maguire. Fantastic save. And it's again saved on the line. Potts this time. Balloons it over. How did that not stay in? It was so I'm sure there's an so handball close. in this. Somewhere it looks like a blatant handball to me. Well, Liverpool on the racket here. Potts flew in there on Oxley Chamberlain. Referee playing the advantage. Curtis Jones is getting it here and uh, tries to get past McCann. Couldn't quite, but Liverpool still have it through Oxley Chamberlain this time. Just wide. That's what they've got in their locker. Barkhazen's going on the outside. Maguire trying to reach it, but it was just headed away. And Curtis Jones will clear too. As uh, it's loose for McCann, who controls it well. Rafferty sets it up towards Barkhazen. He went for it early at the near post to catch the keeper out. But no such luck. Well, that's better from North End. It gets the crowd on their feet and finding their voices again. Morton with a long ball forward this time. Finding Williams, who takes it well. He wants it onto his right foot, which is the long way around Cunningham. And his cross too is turned in. And it's Liverpool who score. And it's Minamino again. The cup experts for the Premier League side pops up again with yet another goal in this competition for him. It's his third goal of the season. It's cruel on North End, who have been so good on the night, but they find themselves behind now, thanks to that Minamino goal. It's Preston North End nil, Liverpool one. Here's Tomiskus now for Liverpool. The cross is an awkward one. It's off the crossbar. Williams trying to finish it off. It could fall to Origi with a scorpion kick. And he finishes North End off in this game. And Liverpool are heading to the quarter-finals of the competition thanks to Divock Origi's goal. Liverpool, 
Liverpool are through again here and it could be a chance to make it 3-0 for Declan Rudge with a brilliant save there. Well, the full-time whistle goes. Craig Preston fall to the Premier League Giants of Liverpool tonight. Emil Reece still in the studio with us, mainly because we've locked the doors and he can't get out. But uh, it's been so far so good from a personal perspective this season. We know the results haven't been going the way that we wanted. I won't patronise anybody by saying that. But nine goals this season is, is a decent tally so far. So how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, I didn't expect nine uh, goals this as of now, before the season, but um, I'm just happy to yeah, scoring goals and help the team the best way I can. Three, I think it was last season, wasn't it? Uh, five, three, five, three. I was right. I should have stuck with that. I knew that. We can take five if you want. Well, let's pretend you had five. But um, so, what's changed? Uh, confident, uh, definitely. Um, that's a as a striker, that's probably the main thing you need. Um, you need to be confident and calm in front of the goal. Um, you need to, when you have your, your chance, you need to be yeah, calm and think clear um, and just be, as when, and when you score more and more goals, you get more and more confident. So that's, yeah. I was going to say like a chicken and egg thing, I suppose. Yeah. When you get that first one, you get the second yeah. one and then. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you get more confident and you get more, yeah. Um, it doesn't put the pressure on you when you, if you miss the first chance and like, you have another chance, you like, or rushing into it or something like that, but you're definitely more calm when you get the chance. Does it keep the brain clear as well? You know, you're also on automatic pilot when you've got a few, you just, rather than thinking too much about it. Yeah, definitely, you get, um, yeah, you know kind of more what you do and then you don't, yeah, as I said, don't rush into it. You like, you think, uh, you can like think an extra time about it and yeah, look at the keeper or something and yeah. I have spoken to some, um, well, many managers over the years who always say that visualising scoring goals helps you score more goals. So why don't we literally, rather, because we can't see inside your brain, no. I have no idea what is in there, but uh, other than goals, goals and more goals. So let's go with your top three so far at Preston North End. We'll yeah. come back in uh, 2025 when you've just extended your contract again and say, let's look at your top 100 goals, oh, maybe. Right, yeah. <laughs> so top three for now, we are starting from three to one, like the charts, uh, with the Middlesbrough goal. Yeah. Talk us through it. Yeah, obviously we win the ball up here. Um, I turn on the first guy there, run the ball all the way to the box. Um, kind of like look up, don't see anyone I can pass, and yeah, take it through them, and then hard, flat finish under the keepers. Yeah, under the keeper. Why was that one so special? Just well, because of the, how far you've yeah, run more than I, anything? Yeah, I got it on the halfway line and you see here I go between the defenders, uh, yeah, and a left foot finish. Maradona-esque, you've <laughs> gone so far with that one. We've seen just about every single angle we could possibly do for yeah. that one, but why not? Well, yeah, that's, that's not bad, I suppose. Here's another <laughs> angle, just in case you... Uh, it is his third favourite goal. OK, so secondly, we are, uh, we've got the goal against Reading. Why have you chosen this one at Reading? Obviously, my, my first goal. Um, again, a ball in behind. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was a very bouncy pitch. And uh, luckily, I got the ball under control. And yeah, uh, I think I showed it between the keeper's legs as well, maybe. Um, and as you said, it's your first goal when you joined the club. Yeah. In terms of, I suppose, this, this was your second opportunity in this country, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, they showed a lot of faith in you. Was this part of you repaying that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been, and especially at that point, I've been, I've been working a long time and been playing a lot and without getting that goal. So finally to get that goal and show that I can do it in the championship, is, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. What did it mean to come back to this country again after, you know, you had, you had a chance at Derby. I know that you wanted to do more, maybe weren't given the opportunity to do that. So you went away, worked even harder. What did it mean that when Preston North End said, come on? Yeah, well, it was, uh, I've always liked England and, and watched English football, um, especially the Premier League. But yeah, um, 
I've always liked English football, as I said, and yeah, to come here and get my second chance and yeah, start scoring goals, that was amazing. Who would have been your favourite team when you were as a kid? Did you have one or? Oh yeah, I, I was a big fan of uh, Didier Drogba, so um, yeah, uh, I was a, a Chelsea fan. So quite a strong, powerful centre forward, yeah. plenty of goals. Yeah. Just like your good self. Yeah, hopefully. And then when we get in the Premier League, maybe you could get in the 100 club as well. Hopefully I can get uh, to his level at one day. With He says he wished he'd been at your level. <laughs> All yeah, right, yeah. yeah, you talk to him. I do, he texts, he just texts, All just right, on yeah. text and yeah, okay. stuff, you know. All right. Um, right, number one goal. Yeah. What is it and why? Um, Coventry goal. Um, obviously that meant a lot um, in, front of the, in front of the home fans as well um, to win the game. Um, yeah, that was amazing and yeah, okay goal as well, I reckon, so um, yeah. What, because obviously it took a while for you to play in front of cr crowds at Deepdale, yeah. anywhere, yeah. for a while as well, so what did this lot mean to you? Yeah, um, that was um, amazing to score in front of them and to hear the, the noise they, they made when, when I scored the goal and yeah, it was amazing to, to have them there. A couple of full houses, I know Derby almost of all has, yeah. the, the Carabao Cup game, 100% sold out. What difference does that make inside Deepdale? Oh, um, it's like a 12th man on the pitch. Um, you get an extra boost so, uh, to hear the noise. And uh, I remember the Swansea game as well, when we were, we were winning, they were so amazing as well. So um, that definitely helped you over the, the finish line. Thank you for now. Stay there. Doors are still locked, so you still can't go anywhere. We've been chatting. It's the it's we call it the Greza Derby this weekend. So Graham Alexander, who played over 400 times for Preston North End, before he came to us, he was at Luton Town, and that's there's the connection. You see, yeah. we don't just make this stuff up no, as no, we no. go along. You know, we we do sometimes, but on this occasion, bit of planning in there as well. So let's uh, start. He's getting old now, though. Graham Alexander. Pretty old, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's double, more than double your age. Yeah. And almost double my age with me only being 27 years old. So that's how we start with Greza. We check his eyesight, we offer him his free bus pass and we say happy birthday, Graham Alexander. Greza, it's always a joy to see you. I don't see you as often anymore, obviously, because you've gone north of the border. But I'll start by saying happy birthday, albeit belatedly. Uh, how was it? Are, are you feeling really old? I am, mate, as, uh, as you can see by the, the Santa Claus beard. Um, yeah, I turned 50 uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, knew it was coming up. Uh, fortunately enough for me, Chris Lachetti turned 50 10 days before me. So <laughs> sort of, I had 10 days of rubbing that in, but then um, I joined the club. So it was, uh, no, it was good. I got to see um, some uh, all my family down in Coventry and, and some close friends and... Uh, it was, it was a good weekend. It, it fortunately fell on the international break, so I managed to be able to travel down and see my family. So, it was, uh, yeah, it was good, but um, it's just a number. Don't worry. I can, I can still crack on. That's what you say when you get to that age, isn't it? It's just, it's just a number. It's, it's when you start saying you're still 27, like me, that that's, that's when you start to worry. <laughs> We're trying to look like 27. I am 27 as well, just for the record. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you're at Motherwell now and doing well. So, how is it north of the border? Yeah, it's great. It's um, I can't believe it's been uh, nine months already. Uh, to for when I joined, it was really um, a flash in the pan sort of thing. Uh, the whole scenario coming around, and uh, I decided to uh, go for it. I thought it was an exciting opportunity. Obviously, the club was um, joint bottom at the time in January, and it was. Uh, a fight to stay in the Premiership, which we we did um, comfortably in the end, but um, it was great. And you know, at the moment we're in the top six, which is uh, a sort of aim at the end of the season, if possible. And um, we've we've made a, a good start. It's it's been tough. There's some massive clubs up here, as, as you know. We've got Rangers again on on Sunday, um, so it's but they're brilliant games. You know, full houses, uh, cracking atmospheres, and. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on, so it's a, it's a great job. Brilliant club. Um, sort of said when I when I joined after probably the first two or three weeks, it's uh, it reminded me a lot of when I joined Preston back in the day because it was it's quite a traditional club and uh, really good people and um, and they allow you to to crack on with your job and they just support you. So it's a it's a thoroughly uh, enjoyable job. But um, 
as you know, with management, it's it's always tough. Does it feel like you're back home, even though you're not home, if you know what I mean by that, in terms, obviously, you, you played internationally for Scotland, yeah. Scottish heritage and everything that went with it. You, you're clearly not Scottish, but you are Scottish, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. I, 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 but I don't, I don't feel a bit as my home, but I feel like I have an affinity with Scotland and certainly with Glasgow, because it's where my dad was, was born. Um, he, uh, he grew up about, I think it's just over one and a half miles from where I, I'm currently living. Um, so he came up for 10 or 11 days um, a little bit ago and uh, took me on a little tour of his, his childhood um, sort of playground sort of thing and where, where he grew up and lived and the little places he, he ran around. So that, that was brilliant. So, it, it, you know, I, I do feel like an affinity to, to this part of the world because of my, like you say, because of my family connections and then... Um, it's uh, it was a bit it was a big um, sort of uh, question for us to answer when moving out of Preston because been there for 22 years. Um, you know, the, my, my children grew up there uh, from such a young age. My, my daughters were just babies when we moved there. My son was two, and um, so there, you know, we but they've my, my girls have moved on to to London together to uh, to go to university and stuff, and it just felt like. The, the right time to maybe, um, you know, sort of crack on. Um, my son's up, come up here with me, but he, he goes back down to Preston quite often, um, getting onto the North End games and that. So uh, it's it's good. We've still got a, a real great affection and, and connection with Preston. That, that will never go because of uh, how big it was in our lives. But, um, you know, we, we, we feel sort of at home here in, in Glasgow and uh, really enjoying it. And of the more than 1,000 games that you've played in your professional career, uh, almost half at Preston North End and a, another big chunk at Luton Town. So a good time to talk to you ahead of the Greza Derby this weekend. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it seems like a different lifetime ago when I, when I first went to Luton. I, you know, I'd been at Scunthorpe for seven years in, in, in the bottom division and... Um, and Luton gave me the opportunity to to play in the championship. You know, they they came and signed me on. I think it was the first day of preseason, nineteen ninety five, and um, yeah, it, it was a, a big move for me, uh, jumping up two divisions. And it was the first time I'd sort of um, been brought out of my comfort zone from Scunthorpe, and uh, it was it was difficult at first. You know, I'd, um, moving to a, a bigger club and a, a higher level. Um, and the, the first year didn't go fantastic well for us. We got relegated. Um, I was probably in and out of the team for the first half of it. Um, so it was a difficult time, but, you know, I managed to get back in the team and we had a good couple of years. But, um, you know, I, I think I've said before, I was, I was ready to leave. Um, it was it, Luton was going through an extremely difficult time, you know, uh, close to administration and stuff like that and selling all off their, their best players. And um, I just felt it was a time for a move. And obviously that's when I joined Preston. But uh, I enjoyed my time at Luton and still speak to a couple of old teammates from there. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see them both in the championship, both clubs and, and it's, uh, you know, competing. I remember, I think when I was at Preston, I think I scored my 100th career goal actually against Luton. At deep down, which was a special moment for me, and um, so yeah, the, the connections with me and both clubs are, are there for see, to see. And you say about former teammates when you joined in 1995, Nathan Jones joined Luton yeah. that season as well, and you got on so well that he he, he quickly left to, to go to Spain <laughs> no long after that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's uh, job at Luton now, isn't he? Yeah, fantastic, you know. Um, yeah, he, he joined on, I think we joined. Uh, pretty much in the same couple of days. Um, it was a big move for both of us. I think he'd come from Wales. I, I came from Scunthorpe, the fourth division. And um, unfortunately for Nathan, he couldn't quite break into the team. But um, yeah, and he, he, he had this move to Spain. He actually um, left his car in my garage for about six months after that. So, uh, you know, uh, I had to park my car on the street. But um, <laughs> no, he, was, he was a really good guy, passionate about football. Um, you know, I've, I've met him a couple of times, obviously, since then. And uh, passionate about football. And he's done a a brilliant job at Luton, you know, um, for obviously in his first spell um, and then managed to, to say, keep them in the championship when he went back for his second spell and obviously they're, they're flying high at the moment. So, um, yeah, he's a, a real football guy, uh, intense, passionate, but, um, you know, that's how you have to be about football, really. 
And just finally, you'd mentioned about in terms of when you came to Preston and into, well, when you went to Luton and all the other moves that you've had and even now going up to Motherwell. In terms of when you do go to a new place, how easy it is to set it, settle in? And I say that because uh, we're talking to Emil Reese and his first year at Preston was, was mostly, I suppose, behind a closed deep dale because of the COVID situation. And that also meant, because of lockdown, he, he couldn't get out and explore. So when you moved here, what sort of things did you do? Because I, I know that your love for Preston and for Lancashire is a, a big one. So what sort of things should we tell Emil now that he can go out and have a look? To have, go out and have a look. Well, uh, well, <laughs> well that's the important thing that he, he goes out and actually, you know, gets out and communicates and, and bees are out. All the North End fans, I think... Um, you know, I was fortunate when I came here, it was the same scenario, you know, there was no supporters. So it was only this season that I've first been able to engage with the supporters on a proper basis. So that's been great. But when I first joined Preston, it was, um, you know, I, I remember just being blown away by the, the atmosphere in Deepdale. You know, I think the first game, my first game, and it was in League One against Northampton. I'm sure there was like 16, 17,000 on. And it was just like, it was phenomenal. You know, and, and we won 3 0. And I just thought, oh, it, you know, I felt like I was in the big time. You know, it could, just because of the atmosphere and the crowd and, and, and the stadium. And um, and I remember, you know, obviously when we joined, you know, David Moyes had this uh, sort of unwritten rule that everyone lived within ten miles of deep down. You know, that was what he did to new signings. And it was a it was a brilliant move. It's it's probably um, possible to sort of do now, but um, with with players. But for those first couple of years, every player that joined Preston lived, you know, in Preston. Um, and uh, so, you know, in, I lived in, in Cottom and uh, we, you know, there was Teppi Moylan, Richard Creswell, Ian Anderson. Uh, there, was so, there was so many of us, you know, Sean Regan was just down the road, Steve Basham, all, all these guys. And it, it enabled us just to mingle with Preston supporters every single day, you know, and interact with them wherever you down at Tesco's, you know, in town having a beer, wh wherever it was, it was just always North End fans talking to you and, um, and you knew their passion for the club. So it was... It was brilliant from Moise. I think he, I think after the third year, he, there was a couple of players we missed out on and he had to change it, you know, because you know, they wanted to live further out. But I just thought that was the, you know, when I joined, I remember going into the players bar, the old, you know, the old players bar in the old stand straight after, and it was packed, you know what I mean? And, and we always used to, I used to love going in there, you know, because it was, you'd have to squeeze through the door and try and get to the bar for a beer. But it was, it was brilliant because, you know, those, those days, I know it's, back in the day, but they were great because you got to mingle with the support straight after the game, you know, have a few beers, you were allowed to have a few beers there. And I just thought there was a real connection with everybody and, and that that never left me um, the whole time I was with Preston. And even when I you know, obviously left Preston playing-wise and, and came back, or even while I was away, I, I continued to live in Preston. And, you know, I, 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 always, I, was, I remember when I went to Burnley, I was very nervous about if, if I could carry on living in Preston because of that. Um, but within a, a few days of bumping into a few North End fans, it, it, I, I knew it wasn't a problem. It, they were fantastic with me. And uh, it was great for me because I felt like it was my home. And it, it is, you know, my, 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 my children feel like it's their home because they've spent their whole upbringing there. And, uh, but it was by being out there and engaging and, and, and being part of those, those supporters. And um, he, he will understand now that obviously that he'll know the, about the atmosphere inside Deepdale. But I think the more you, you get to know the people, then you, you get a genuine warmth for them. And um, I think that sort of helps your performances on the pitch by knowing that you care about the people and the, key, the people care about you. Good stuff from Greza. And obviously, as he ended there, in terms of settling in, really difficult for you coming in when nobody could do anything, go anywhere, see anyone. Um, good that you could play football. But how hard was it that you could do nothing else when you've come from a completely different country? Yeah, it was it was hard. Um, I think the first couple of weeks when I came here, everything was a bit open, but then it just shut down, and yeah, um, almost the whole season last season was shut down. So um, that was that was pretty tough. Um, I have almost completed Netflix and all the other services, but yeah. Um, it was hard. And I know people were going, oh, hard for all of us, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. But people, you know, when you've come from a different country, and I know you, you were at Derby before and you, and you know 
typically the Danes know how to speak English, probably better than me, mostly. But, um, and you couldn't have your family around with you as well. So what you've said about Netflix, yeah. did that affect your football, all that sort of stuff? Um, I think the good thing is about, I had my dog over and my missus over. That, that was um, a big factor for me, but obviously my, I couldn't go home back to my, my family, um, uh, my mum and dad and all that. Um, but, and they couldn't come over. So that was, that was tough to not see them for yeah, seven months or eight months. Um, uh, but luckily, I, um, I could come to football. I have my social life there. And that, it kind of helped me to come here. And yeah, definitely. Mum and dad have come over now to watch you. So what did they think of a son wearing the famous Lily White of Preston North End? And what did they make of Deepdale? Yeah, it was, um, they, were, they liked it uh, a lot, so they were just proud to see me play, play in the stadium, yeah. So, um, that was, um, yeah, I was pr proud to show them as well, um, to see, so that I can show them where, what I was doing every day, and yeah, uh, hopefully they can come a lot more. Which game did they, did just one game did they get to, or did they get to a couple, or...? Uh, yeah, I think they came to the West Bromwich game. Right. I'm not sure. So you scored the game before, you scored the game after, yeah, no, I think I made the assist in the West Bromwich game Does that as well. Count? So, uh, That's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was just uh, proud to show them what I, was, what I was doing. Good. And as Greza said as well about settling in, about getting out and about and trying to sort of visit stuff, do we need to, to take you to Avonham Park and things like that? How, how have you managed to interact? Um, well, obviously, I've been walking a lot of parks with my dog, so. Uh, I've been seeing quite a lot of um, the parks around and everything, but um, yeah. Down to Moor Park, to the duck pond and getting the dog yeah. legs stretched and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Just finally, because apparently we do have to unlock the doors and let you out to go to training. I don't know, we could sit here and talk in, in Danish, but people wouldn't understand, no, so it would no. be wrong Obviously. for me to do that. Um, what are we looking at going forward in terms of, do you, are you someone who sets targets? Do you think about that sort of thing? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I think it's important for anyone. Um, as a, a and as a striker, you definitely set targets about getting goals and yeah, contributing to goals. So um, that's something I do. Yeah, every half a year. So um, I've got a target. Yeah. I know you're not going to tell me that target, so I'm not even going to waste my breath asking. But are you anywhere near where you want to be? Are you on track? Are you are you feeling good about it? Um. I'm on, I'm on track, yeah, but it's not like I'm definitely going to get there. I still need to, to work hard and get my goals. Uh, so it's not like I, I, I'm, I'm trying to not set an easy target that's easy to reach, but obviously it's still not too hard to be impossible, so we get disappointed. But um, if I get close to that target, I'll be, yeah, very happy. Good man. Toluga. Tag. Yeah, see, I get I feel like that. It's, just, it's brilliant, isn't it? It's like we're in... Denmark right now it's almost Shakespearean in many ways right thank you very much for that thank you now the fixture against Luton Town is the last game at Deepdale before Remembrance Day so I travelled to Deepdale to talk to Alistair White from the Preston North End Community and Education Trust to talk to him about exactly what this game means yeah, and with the magic of the weekend warm-up, we are at Deepdale with Alistair White, who is the Community Engagement Coordinator. I knew that, for the Preston North End Community and Education Trust. Alistair, you've got loads planned for the day of the Luton Town match. So yeah. let's start with uh, the kind of people who are the very special guests of North End. Yes, so we've got uh, numerous people who are veterans and current armed serving personnel attending the game, about 100 people. Um, We've got um, people who we pitch side, including a bugler, to play in the last post. We've got uh, 40, well, 20 children taking part in a half-time game. Uh, they are children from serving personnel from the forward barracks. Uh, we've also gave away uh, 50 tickets to local organisations who are supporting veterans or working uh, with people who are currently serving in the armed forces. It's a great day to say thank you, isn't it, effectively? I know that there are uh, quite a few that are coming in the Invincibles suite here. So what sort of people do you engage with? Uh, so we try and engage with people who are other people in the Preston Lancashire area who are engaging and supporting uh, veterans and armed, force, armed forces personnel. 
um, and we're trying to develop our networks and links with them to try and broaden our offer on um, our p e Forces programme um, but also to try and make sure that most of all our veterans in the area are supported. In terms of what's happening for the Luton Town match then, I know that there's a, a lot before the game so that people can pay their respects, so what will happen? So at the beginning of the game there will be a bugler with other people from the Duke of Lancashire Regiment lined up on pitch side um, where the last post will be played and uh, we can pay our respects. Now as far as things that you do away from Remembrance Day and it's not just a, a one day a year thing, you've got constant programmes uh, that are happening all the time and we were talking about there's a, there's a football team as yes. well. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so as part of our P&E Forces programme, uh, which is supporting veterans and armed forces personnel in the area, and using the power of our badge, we engage people through um, footballing activities. Um, so there's weekly sessions where they can turn up and we play football uh, in preparation for playing in a Northwest, Vest Northwest Veterans League, including teams like Blackpool, uh, Fleetwood, uh, other teams like that. Um, we're also trying to work on broadening our offer as well to cater for a wide range of other veterans as well. There will be people watching this, I'm sure, who will be very interested in that or will know people who will be very interested yeah. in that. Is there anywhere where they can find out more information? Yes, so you can drop me an email on alistair.white at or um, just have a look on the community website where they can contact us through that. Um, Great stuff. And just finally, though, because I know everybody is talking to us about these special badges yes. that they are made every year. They've got the year on them as well so yeah. that people can buy a new one every single year. It's £5 donations go towards the, the British Legion. Yes, Royal British Legion. And where can people get them? Uh, people can get them from either our community trust offices located in the Allen Kelly stand or from the club shop or the ticket office. Great stuff. I hope and I'm sure everything will go well at the weekend, but it's brilliant everything that you're doing. So well done on that. Cheers. Thank you. So as I head back into the warmth and across to Exton, let's hear the thoughts ahead of the Luton Town game from our head coach, Frankie McAvoy. Uh, Nathan Jones has done a fantastic job, you know, getting back setting time to, to Luton. Uh, and I think they're unbeaten seven games. So it'll be a tough game. But what we need to do is we're at home. In the main, we've done particularly well at home, you know, after losing the first game of the season. Uh, and, we, you know, I've asked the players and I've asked the supporters to get you know, to make Deepdale a difficult place for anybody to come. Uh, and that's what we need to try and do on Saturday again. Make it really, really tough for Luton uh, and hopefully go and try and get the three points. We've let him out to go and score some goals. Congratulations to Luga on his new contract. If you haven't got your ticket yet for this weekend's game against Luton Town, you can still do so in all the usual places. That is online, mypne.com, in person at the ticket office right until kickoff. Or you can even phone as well. I can't, well, I can't remember the number. There it is. It's like a telephone, this, isn't it? Phone this number now. Don't phone it now if it's in the middle of the night because there'll be nobody there. If you are coming to Deepdale, the fan zone is open from 12 o'clock uh, plenty to do in there. I know that you like to get together and have a few drinks, chat with your mates about it. You can do that after the game as well. But if you can't get to Deepdale, you can follow it in the usual places. I follow PNE if you're living abroad, you lucky people. Although, hey, you'd be even luckier to live right here in Lancashire, Preston. Um, but you can watch it. And that is it for the weekend warm up. And just remains for me to say, come on, you whites! <laughs>